All right, this video will be looking at slope intercept form of linear functions and we'll start with an introduction and do a few examples. So slope intercept form is that familiar form to you, I hope, y equals mx plus b. It's probably the most well-used form of linear functions. And m and b are the coefficients or the numbers in the equation and obviously x and y are the variables in the equation. M often represents the slope, and I actually don't know why it's M, but it is. Sometimes you actually will see it as A, but in, in high school you often, you almost always see it as M for some reason. And B represents the y-intercept, okay? So the y-intercept is where the line crosses the y-axis, and the slope, as we talked about in an earlier video, is the rise over the run, or the, or essentially the steepness of the line, okay? Um, and so we'll do a variety of, of different examples with this form of a linear function. And the first example we'll do is just to try to figure out what the slope and the y-intercept of a line are, if we know the equation. So for this example, we have 2y minus 5x is equal to 18, and we need to get it into that y equals mx plus b form. And so what we're going to do is basically isolate for y. We need to solve for y. So I'm going to add 5x to both sides to work towards getting all the y's and only the y's on the left, okay? So these 5x's cancel and we have 2y equals 5x plus 18. And then we can divide by two. And it looks like that'll then we'll be there. So let's divide both sides by two, keep our equation balanced. And we have a y is equal to 5 halves x plus 9. I think slope is relatively easier to work with as a fraction, especially if you're graphing, although make sure you're listening to what your teacher asks you to do if, if, if you want it to be a fraction or a decimal. So we could have written it as y equals 2.5 x plus 9. The way that the reason the fraction is easier is this 5 over 2. We have a, a rise of 5 for every run of 2, so it would make it easy to graph. So we can answer the question now. Our slope is 5 halves, and our y-intercept is 9. Common mistakes sometimes, and let's, let's move on from this one right here. Sometimes if you were adding 5x to both sides, you might get this. And then if you divided both sides by 2, you would get that, y equals 9 plus 5 halves x. And that's still correct, but the mistake that stems from that is sometimes people would then think the slope would be 9 and the y-intercept would be 5 halves. Um, the slope is always the number that's being, that x is being multiplied by in this situation. Let's write an equation for a line with a slope of negative 2 and a y-intercept of 4.5. So this is a pretty easy, just plug the numbers in type problem. And we're going to plug the slope in there and the y-intercept in for b. So we can just write it out. y equals negative 2x plus 4.5. Easy peasy, then we're done. Another thing you'll get is to try to get, or another thing you'll be asked is to try to get an equation from a graph. And what I really suggest here is um, trying, well, we'll need to find the slope and the y-intercept. And to find the slope, you want to look for points that cross coordinates pretty cleanly here. Okay, so I'll, I'll pick those two. I could have picked other pairs as well. And then we'll also want to make sure we see the y-intercept. So that's the y-intercept right there. So right away, we can write out y equals mx minus 5. But let's work on finding the slope. And Probably the easiest way if we're given the graph is to just draw a slope triangle. And let's see what we get. We get a rise of one, two, three, four, and a run of two. So our slope is four over two, which simplifies down to two. So y equals four halves x minus five. And let's simplify that down to y equals two x minus five. So we have a starting value of negative five and a slope of two or a change of two, meaning that every time x goes over by one, y goes up by two. Over one, up two. Over one, up two. All right, and lastly, or not lastly, but our next example 
is let's try to find an equation if we're given a couple points. And this is probably one of the more involved problems you'll do. It's really plugging into an equation. Um, it's not quite as visual as using a graph. So let's find the slope. And then we're going to take the slope and either one of our points, it doesn't matter which one we pick, but you can be clever and maybe choose a simpler point. Um, we're gonna plug, plug that stuff into y equals mx plus b. We're going to solve for b, and then once we know m and b, we can write out the equation. So let's go ahead and do it. So we're gonna find the slope first, and remember slope is the change in y over the change in x. In math, that triangle is the Greek letter delta, and that often means change. So the change in y over the change in x, which really just means we're subtracting our y values, and then we're dividing by the difference in the x values. Okay, so five minus 17 is negative 12. Three minus negative one is a positive four. So it looks like our slope is a negative three. Okay, so we got, we got the slope figured out. So that's our first step, but we still need to find the y-intercept. We need to find um, b. And we're going to choose one of these two sets of points. And I think you can tell right away which point would be easier to choose. I think the three, five is easier. It's got smaller numbers, it's got just positive numbers. So let's choose that, a little less likely to make a mistake. So we're gonna go ahead and plug in to y equals mx plus b the information we know. And we know that m is negative three, we don't know b yet, and let's plug in x and y. And here's another common mistake. In my equation here, y comes first, but in this, in the, um, coordinate ordered pair up here, x comes first. So you just wanna make sure that you're remembering that here x is three and y is five. So we have a five equals negative three times the three plus b. And we just need to figure out what b is. Five equals negative nine plus b, a little simplifying, we could add nine to both sides, 14 equals b. So we have our slope, we have our y-intercept, and we can write out our final equation. We can plug this information in to y equals negative three x plus 14. In, in terms of doing a check here, I think it is sometimes helpful is to draw just a super rough sketch of things. We have a, a very relatively high y-intercept with a steep downward slope, negative three x plus 14. Does it make sense for it to be over three and up five. Sure, roughly, yeah, that seems to make sense. And the second point, negative one, way up 17, yeah, that seems to, to make sense too. So a quick rough visual is, is a reasonable way to check. So there's our final solution right there, negative three x plus 14. And lastly, on for, the, for this um, video, we'll do graphing. And this is a pretty pretty easy thing to do as long as you have it in slope intercept form already or in y equals mx plus b form already. So we have a slope, whoops, we have a slope of two thirds, we have a y-intercept of negative four. So let's go to our y-intercept first and plot negative four. I'm gonna make sure I know what my scale is here. And let's just have each square be one. So we're gonna go down to negative four. And then our slope is two thirds. This is what makes fractions so nice. We just go up two over three, up two over three, up two over three. And we can do that as many times as we feel like we want to. Um, we can also go down two and over three in the other direction, okay? And it looks like all our points are falling in a straight line. So that's good. So we'll pull out our ruler and try to connect these guys. And there we just graphed our linear equation. All right, that's a good place to stop.